Uh, now, coronavirus, everyone's talking about it. Of course, yesterday, the chief medical officer, Chris Whitty, announced that we are moving into the delay stages now of the containment plan. Um, and shortly afterwards, sadly, the UK's first death. Uh, this was a 75-year-old woman, I believe, um, and that was confirmed yesterday. So people are starting to get more yeah, and more yeah. concerned. We're all trying not to Look, panic. As I said, we've got the two doctors with us now, Dr Sarah and Dr Zoe, uh, about all of this. Uh, I, I just happened to go into the chemist yesterday for something and the shelves were, were cleared. There, people were, there was no masks, there was no uh, the gel, whatever, whatever. First of all, the gel thing, let's just mm. tackle that. Do you need it necessarily? So soap and water will, will work and it will work very well if you wash your hands regularly and properly. If you aren't able to access soap and water, hand sanitizer is great. It needs to be above 60% to be effective. OK, but you don't need it necessarily. You don't. Right. If you can wash your hands, actually hand washing with soap and hot water is preferable because then you're actually washing the virus away. The gel aims to kill the virus and we all have access to soap and water when we're at yeah. home. So it's only really when you're out and about that mm -hmm. the gel should be used and rather the, the, than The gel, it's because of its alcohol content, yeah. isn't mm -hmm. it, really? So, Can darling, we just talk about you'll be fine into this on that. You just keep on doing what you're doing. Phase. <laughs> <be> <laughs> Sorry, great. we've done the hand gel thing. Mm -hmm. uh, no, because Chris Whitty, who's the Chief Medical Officer, he also said there is next to no chance of this being stopped. So what yeah. is this next phase? Because that worries people, that words yeah. like that, you go, oh, is this an epidemic mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Well, let's just so, stop spreading it quickly yeah. now. We've got to slow it up. What's, what's changed in the past few days is that up until a few days ago, all of the confirmed cases in the UK of coronavirus, we knew where they got it from, we knew which country they'd come back from, or the person who they caught it off who'd come back from one of those countries. It's only this week that we've had confirmed cases of people where there is no transmission route, we don't know. So therefore, the scientists, we have to assume that it is now being spread, being passed from one person to another in the community. OK, we're going to pass ourselves to the phone lines now. Julie, first of all, on this. Um, Julie, you believe you're, you're at risk, you've got underlying conditions. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, tell us more, Julie. Uh, I have serious underlying conditions, mainly with my lungs, um, suffering from lung fibrosis as well as emphysema. Um, my question is, what are they doing um, for us? Should should we, with these conditions, now stop going out and about into crowded places, stop going shopping, stop having our school-aged grandchildren over from school? Um, yes, I'm, I'm 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 quite worried about it now. Mm. I think it's completely understandable with conditions that you have. You are somebody who, if you were to get coronavirus, we would be concerned about you. You know, you're somebody who would be at higher risk of having complications and who would need an NHS bed if that was to happen. At the moment, because the numbers are so, so low, the chance of you, any one of us, catching it from any other individual we come into contact with are still practically zero, very, very low. That could change at any point. And there are risks of isolating yourself as well, you know, risks to your mental health, not getting out there, risks of malnutrition to those that are elderly. So what I think you can do is take some additional precautions for yourself. So the precautions around hand washing and using alcohol gel. But also, if you have a look on the NHS website at the self-isolation advisements, then, you know, you don't need to do all of those. You don't need to self-isolate. But there may be some things there that you think are quite easy for you to do that give you some added protection. Maybe getting someone to do, you know, maybe her family family members to do her shopping for her so she, and then they make sure they wash their hands when they come in. Yeah. That kind of thing. So it's a kind of halfway house. Anything you'd add, Sarah? Yeah, avoiding crowded um, places, avoiding big gatherings, you know, be sensible about it, but don't completely self-isolate yourself because, as Zoe said, you know, that's going to affect your mental health as well. But I think all the normal precautions and maybe that little bit extra, but don't worry that if you do end up needing hospital care, you won't be told you just have to self-isolate. Mm. You will be allowed to go into yeah. hospital. Just and get that stay there. sensible, Julian. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Uh, but Julie was talking there about shopping and supermarket shopping, mm. saying maybe I shouldn't go. And obviously, a lot of people now are turning to online shopping and having groceries delivered. Uh, let's go to Louisa. Hello, Louisa. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Now, you are a delivery driver, is that right? I, that's right, yeah. And so everybody's talking about, oh, you know, let's have our groceries delivered. How worried are you that you're going around to people's houses about yeah, catching sure. this virus? I know. So, obviously, we've got a few regulars, or quite a lot, really, but a couple of old ladies that aren't in the best of health. And it worries me that I could go somewhere and not know and then, obviously, contract the virus mm. and then pass it on not even knowing. 
because obviously everybody else is starting to get their orders delivered. And I've got other family members that have got underlying conditions as well. And it's like, I don't know what's the best to do, really. I think it's really important that um, you remember that you're young, fit and healthy. So the likelihood is you probably won't have significant symptoms. If you do get significant symptoms, that's when you self-isolate anyway. So you probably won't be back at work during that period. But if you are at work and you didn't know that you had the virus, uh, it's just about making sure you have hand precautions. So hand hygiene, doing all the things that we've been advising that you do do. Maybe wear gloves when you're delivering the, the groceries instead. But I think it is really important to still have that social interaction with all those those kind of elderly or vulnerable people that you would usually see. And it's lovely that you worry about them, yeah. actually. You clearly do have that, that kind of relationship. Can I ask you about gloves? Mm. Would gloves protect you? So say you were on public transport, or you're like Julie, you've picked... Uh, Louisa, sorry, you've picked something mm. up. If you're wearing gloves, does that... Does, do the droplets stay on your gloves? If you then touched your face, could you still contract it? So if you're using gloves, you're going to have to change them frequently. Mm. So, you know, let's think about how this spreads. It can spread through the air, but when droplets spread through the air, they only last a few seconds. Mostly viruses, and this is for all viruses, are transmitted by our fingers. We actually give it to ourselves mm. mostly. It's on our fingers, we touch our eyes, our nose, our mouth, and that's how it gets in. So every time you touch something that somebody else has touched, then potentially you can pick up the virus. Mm. So gloves can be used, but you need to change them frequently. Essentially, every time you touch something somebody else has touched, the gloves need to be changed. OK. okay. Um, Louisa, uh, stay safe. Thank you very thank much you, indeed Louisa. for your concern. We go to Joe. Uh, Joe, um, so, so, so you're basically saying, Joe, you're worried if you were to contract it, uh, how do you know you've got it? What do you do when you get it, Joe? Yes, that's correct, Heyman. Yeah, obviously we self-treat at home, but what medication would we actually take, for example, to alleviate the symptoms, say, of the shortness of breath or the dry cough even? Yeah, so a lot of people are concerned about how do you know if you have coronavirus or if it's cold, and it's difficult to know. We've, over 18,000 people have now been tested um, and only 116 so far have tested positive, so even people going through 111, it's difficult to know. The symptoms of coronavirus are predominantly a dry cough and a fever. That's in uncomplicated cases, and the symptoms last, on average, about seven days. And, quite a high and then fever. symptoms go You'd away. You'd be very aware you had a fever. It depends. Some people get symptoms so mild that they don't know they have it, so it's really variable. So a dry cough, it doesn't tend to cause runny nose and sneezing and head cold. So if actually you've predominantly got a runny nose and a sore throat, it's less likely to be coronavirus. If you've got just a dry cough and a fever, it could be coronavirus, but it's still more likely to be a yeah. cold or a mild flu. Dr. Sarah, so we should point out as well that tens of thousands of people have contracted it and come out the other end. Oh, absolutely. For the absolute vast majority of people, you're going to be absolutely well with it. You know, you'll have a bit of a flu-like illness and you'll be absolutely fine on the other end. It is only that minority of people, absolute minority, um, for whom you are elderly or at risk and therefore are at a higher risk yeah. of complications. Um, so Self-treating, it's exactly as you would with a cold. Treat your symptoms in the same way. Things like paracetamol, ibuprofen, honey and lemon, lots rest. of hydration and rest. rest. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are talking about children. Can Thanks, Joe. Yes, it, thank you, Joe. Um, let's go to Jessica. Hello, Jessica. The read-only, darling. Oh, it's a read-only, sorry. Yes. So, Jessica says, I'm really worried about coronavirus because I have a young baby. Mm. My partner and I are both 25. He works with the public in people's homes as a tradesman. My baby's so three months old. Um, I'm worried how we'll care for her if we get ill and also would she contract it? I've had loads of messages from people, especially about pregnant women and pre <coughs> women with, um, you know, uh, young children, families with young children. Um, essentially, you want to avoid catching it yourself if you can. If you do, it, the likelihood is that it's going to be mild in you, but you need to have the precautions to avoid passing it on to your child. That's through hand washing, that lovely phrase. If you're breastfeeding, we don't believe that it can transfer that way, but if you're um, wanting to be extra careful, wear masks um, when you're breastfeeding, if you do have the coronavirus. And are you, or... Sorry, sorry, because you're pregnant. Yes. Is your, are you more at risk? Is your immune system a little depleted if you're growing a baby? Unfortunately so. So you are, you are considered um, an immunocompromised person if you are 
are um, pregnant. Having said that, they haven't seen any specific rises in pregnancy-related coronaviruses. So hopefully it's just in the same way as you would catch a cold or a flu, um, not going to affect any, any babies or infants. Yeah, and it, it does really seem from what we've seen so far that it really is the elderly and those that have significant health conditions. Because when we're talking about flu, yeah. we say very young people are at risk. And actually, in children, they seem to get very mild illness mm -hmm. if they get it at all. And, you know, as Sarah said, there isn't really, from what we've seen so far, any particular concern around, around yeah. pregnancy. But hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Yeah. Hand hygiene, washing your hands, soap. 20 seconds at least, two rounds of happy birthday to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely, it gets boring and it sounds really monotonous, but it mm. genuinely is the best way that people can protect themselves and protect others. And the other thing is, you know, if you do think you have symptoms of coronavirus, please do not go to hospital, no. GP, pharmacy, walk-in centre. Either go online, NHS 111 online, or pick up the phone and call uh, 111. Doctors, thank, thank you, you both very much, very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you.